Uh, he's up in Darwin. What are you doing in Darwin, Matthew Dickerson? Is it personal or can I ask or not? You can ask that. That's yeah. fine. My eldest daughter is just moving to Darwin. So she drove up here over the last four days and she got here last really? night. And I just flew up early this morning just to help her settle in there and wish no, her well. No, that's, no, no, as a father, you wanted to keep watch. That's it. <laughs> Make sure that's everything's going that. well. It's a, it's a great town, Darwin. Great town. You're in for a cloud today in the top of about 33. Look out for the alligators waddling down the main street in the mall, okay? I did hear your weather forecast, so I did look out the window and went, yep, that looks about right. Looks about right. What's happening with this uh, uh, land for the rehab uh, centre? Now, some critics have come out, and I spoke with Dougal Saunders about this, and he said, yeah, it may be silent, but action is taking place. What is going on? Uh, well, I don't really know, Richard. It's obviously not a council-run project. It's a state government who's going to run that project. Sure. And so, obviously, I would take advice from Dougal, as you've taken advice from Dougal, in terms of things that are going on behind the scenes. We're not really privy to that as such. And again, I don't really expect council to be kept up to date every step of the way because it's, again, a health project, a federal government or a state government project. If they kept council up to date every step of the way, you'd just be bogged down with communications from that perspective. Why, why, why? Won't you uh, be sort of uh, privy to what land they purchase? Uh, absolutely. When it gets to that point where there'll be some consultation, I would imagine, when they've actually chosen a land or they might even bring it down to a couple of choices and certainly they'll consult with council at that particular point in time. But while they're out there looking for a parcel of land that's appropriate, then mm. that's really some of the department staff going out and doing that. I would expect that they would then come back to council and say, what do you think of these parcels of land? Is there anything that you want to have an input on? But I'm actually a bit surprised, Richard, that it hasn't happened already. It was a fair while ago, and you might even know the date when they made the announcement that the... Yeah, a long time ago. Yeah, that the state and federal government said, yes, we've got the money for this rehab unit, and the community in general, people that I spoke to, I wasn't on council at the time, but people I spoke to generally said that's a good thing. That's a good thing for the community. It's a good thing to try and keep people out of prison and get them back on the right track. That makes sense. But then, obviously, again, I'm taking the advice that you've had from Dougal, that things have been happening behind the scenes. Personally, I would have preferred to see things happen a little bit faster because I would have thought there would have been some action by now. And once you find a parcel of land, then you've got to build the facility, you've got to get the staff. We know that it's hard to get staff for any well, organisation. You don't have to do the protocols like I have to, and that's put a DA in and all that stuff, don't oh, you? Oh, exactly right, yeah. You've got to make sure that the land is zoned appropriately. You've got to go and do the plans, the DA, build it. So there's a fair process to occur after you've chosen the parcel of land. So long way to go from that perspective and really... Council, sure, we can have discussions with them, but we can't direct a state government department what to do. I'd love if we could direct a state government department what to do, Richard. I'd, I'd direct them in a whole range of different ways to benefit different council. Would you tell them where to go? Yeah, <laughs> well, I'd tell them to give right. us some more money. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that's the way too. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens with rehab because a lot of uh, doubters are saying it's not going to happen. It's 528 on 2D Breakfast. Uh, tell us about the rate variation. I spoke with Murray Wood, your CEO, last week about this. Where is that at? Your application to have a bit of a variance in our rates, where is it? Yeah, so we put that application in and then we've got to wait for IPART to come back and approve that. Now, they seem to indicate there's a lot of councils around the state that have put these special rate variations in, I think somewhere in the order of 70 71 maybe and so we've just got to wait now for them to approve that it seems to me that it's not like a special rate variation normally where there's a whole big body of work that's got to go into it and you don't really know what's going to come out the other end they seem to indicate that because the special rate variation or sorry the normal rate pegging was only 0.7 percent they seem to indicate that they will make it a fairly simple process for it to go through as long as you had the right budgetary information in the your forward estimates already and the community had already seen that they seem to indicate that that will be okay and the 2.3 percent that we had in our forward estimates previously should be granted now we actually i was in sydney yesterday for a regional cities new south wales meeting and certainly the ipart decision was a major part of that conversation and the general consensus from the 16 councils sitting around the table was how could any anyone in this environment say that 0.7% went anywhere close to matching inflation? So, well, 5.1 inflation for a start. Matt. That's right. So for a council to keep providing the services that the community expects and to do that when they only get a 0.7% increase, when, as you said, inflation is running much higher than that, 
that was everyone was shaking their heads and said, "Well, the process in place. We'll wait for that to to play out. We can't really Is there accelerate any time that." Line? Don't they give you a ninety day or something? Twenty eight days. I mean, when you ask a question without notice in Parliament House, you get twenty eight days to answer it. Isn't the local government going to come back to you on that? Well, 21st of June is the date they said they'll notify us by that date, which doesn't give us much time, nine days, to be able to then formally adopt that budget so we can keep paying wages on the 1st of July. financial year. Yeah, that's right. So there'll probably be an extraordinary council meeting, I would guess, between that date when we get the information back. Because if we get a no back as well, we've still got to adopt a budget at 0.7% or at 2.3%, but we've only got nine days to do that. So again, I, I imagine we'll have to have an extraordinary meeting. Okay, all right. And e-scooters? Still waiting, Richard, although no, I did... No, three. We've got the rehab. We're, we're on standby for rehab. We're treading water with the rate variation, and we're still uh, looking at what's going to happen with the e-scooters. I did say I'd like to be able to direct state government departments, Richard, but the e-scooter trial, it was interesting. I actually had contact from NRMA, and one of the gentlemen on from NRMA told me that they were actually part oh, of the... Did Koury give you a call, did he? Uh, I won't mention any individual names, but I, I got contacted okay. by the NRMA, but... They said that they'd been part of the advisory panel on e-scooters and they indicated that Dubbo would be a perfect location for e-scooters. So, unfortunately, we weren't contacted for the early part of the trial, but as you know, we've been contacted by the state government. All councils were sent a letter and then we've certainly put our hand up to say, yes, we'd like to be part of an e-scooter trial. Please give us more details because at the moment it was really just, would you like to be part of a trial? You don't know what it looks like. You don't know if there's any costs involved. You don't know any details, but would you like to be part of it? So we've said yes, yeah. And then pending more information, obviously. Ah, oh, goodness me, that's three unlaid eggs then, isn't it? <laughs> that is, and there are more than three <laughs> unlaid eggs sitting away with any other departments at any given point in time, Richard. All right, so we wait for the, uh, the news on the rehab centre. For, that's right, from you, that's state government. We'll talk with Dougal on that next week. The rate variation, hopefully 2.3 will be ticked off on. And the e-scooter, and let's uh, also embrace Segway scooter trial. I like that one as well. Too. Well, that's, I'm pushing that, but that's not really part of the initial trial, but we'll see oh, how we go with that. Go for broke then, I reckon. That's right. Matty Dickerson, enjoy your stay in Darwin. It's a great town too. Look out for the crocs though down the main street, and we will catch you. In due course, have a nice weekend. Uh, Matthew Dickerson, our Mayor of Dubbo Regional Council. Thanks, Matt. Eight o'clock. Thank you.